We've had a pretty good three-day rally in the stock market. In fact, Monday, which was the last trading day of January, really got the rally started, and it basically mitigated the carnage in what otherwise was a horrible month for the stock market. And so that limited the damage. And I think it also sparked a bit of optimism that maybe the low was in. In fact, if you measure the rally just from Friday's close to Wednesday's interday high, we had about a 5% rise in the NASDAQ composite. But if you look at the riskiest, most beaten down stocks in the index, take a look at, let's say, the Kathy Wood Arc Innovation, that ETF had a 14% rally from Friday's close to today's high. And I think some of the rally was inspired by what was being advertised as bargain hunting. I saw a lot of commentary out there. A lot of analysts were opining about some of these stocks that have come down. Netflix, for example, I forget some of the others that had pulled back quite a bit from their highs. And this was prompting some analysts to claim that they were now bargains, that now they looked attractive on a valuation basis because they had pulled back considerably from the highs. And so it was a good time to go shopping for bargains. Well, that's a mistake that a lot of investors are going to be making over the next year or two at their peril. When you look at these stocks that were dramatically overpriced, And then when they're less overpriced, coming to the false conclusion that you're getting a bargain just because the price is lower. You're not getting a bargain. Maybe the stock is less overvalued than it was at the peak, but it's still overvalued despite the fact that it's down 50% because that's how overvalued it was. A lot of these stocks could drop another 50% from here and still be expensive. So you don't want to get suckered in to this rally. You don't want to buy the dips in these names. As I've been saying, you want to sell the rips because it's a whole new ball game now when it comes to the market. And some of the positive feelings were sparked by a couple of big NASDAQ names that came out with good earnings yesterday after the bell. Alphabet, formerly known as Google, beat and the stock was immediately up 10% in after hours. Of course, they announced a 20 for one stock split, which means absolutely nothing fundamentally, but it means a lot when it comes to people just chasing stocks and buying the stock because the price is lower when in fact, it's not lower. You just got more shares outstanding. So the price means nothing unless you look at it in relation to the number of shares outstanding. But still, in a big mania, people are buying stocks on anything. And so the news of a stock split is reason enough to buy, even though nothing fundamentally changes when a stock splits. AMD, though, also came out with better earnings. I think it was up about 13 or 14% after the close. Now, interestingly enough, both of these stocks closed significantly below their pre-market open highs. Google, I think, was up maybe 5 6% on the day, about half of where it was. AMD as well, it was only up about 5%. Again, well off its opening high and even further off its pre-market high. But really, what not as many people were talking about But what I think is far more significant than the beats by AMD and Alphabet, but the miss by PayPal. PayPal got obliterated. The stock was down 25%, maybe slightly more in regular market trading. As I'm recording this podcast in after hours trading, stock is down even more. But I think that is the more significant number because PayPal is one of the darlings of the stay-at-home type trades as people were staying at home and shopping online and paying for stuff using PayPal. And a lot of the stocks that have had crazy valuations have been those associated with payments, whether it's buy now and pay later with the afterpay model or any alternative payment rail. That's where the momentum has been going. And now you get a stock that disappoints and they take it out behind the woodshed and kill it. Also, significantly, PayPal is one of the darlings of the blockchain crypto trade. If you are a portfolio manager, you're an institutional investor, and you want exposure 
to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, but you don't want to buy the currencies themselves. You want to invest in companies that are poised to benefit from crypto adoption and crypto being mainstream and more ubiquitous, right? If you want to get in on that and ride that wave, PayPal is one of the stocks that people have been buying to get crypto exposure. And now the stock is tanking along with all of the other crypto-related stock plays. They're all tanking as well as the cryptocurrencies themselves. And to me, this really shows a loss of interest in crypto-related investments on the part of the bigger investors, but also why isn't PayPal receiving a big boost in its earnings if it has incorporated crypto and Bitcoin onto its platform and Bitcoin really is changing the world and it's really expanding and everybody is using it? Why isn't that benefiting PayPal? Why isn't PayPal seeing a big boost in its earnings now that it's incorporated Bitcoin onto its platform? It's not doing anything because there's nothing there. The only thing people do with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies is gamble with them. And so PayPal is not seeing a big boost in their earnings because they've incorporated Bitcoin into their business model, and that's sending a signal to other businesses that, hey, there's no reason to incorporate Bitcoin because it's doing nothing for PayPal. So all of these speculative trades are really unraveling. And I think, again, that stock missing and how badly it got beat up is more significant because if you beat your earnings, yeah, you get a rise, but nothing compared to how badly you get spanked if you miss. So the odds are really skewed. If you want to play in this casino and you want to buy some of these stocks, you better hope and pray that the earnings beat because if they miss, you're really going to get killed. In fact, I was watching on CNBC this morning. They were interviewing this woman who had gotten out of her alphabet position and the host was saying, well, are you upset that you sold alphabet seeing how much it's up today, which I thought was a really stupid question. I mean, obviously, stock's up 10%. You just sold it the other day. You got to be pretty upset that you sold it. I mean, what an asinine question to ask. But the interesting thing about her answer was that, well, you know, you can't win them all. I made a good profit in it, but at least I took the money that I got by selling Alphabet and I bought Meta, right? Meta was Facebook. Well, Facebook just reported after the bell today and that stock is now down 20% because she thought the earnings were going to beat and the earnings missed. You pay a high price in this market for missing earnings if you are one of these high flying momentum stocks. And believe me, there are a lot of stocks flying a lot higher than Facebook. And if Facebook can be punished so badly by a miss, imagine what could happen to some other companies. If Small ebook, big impact, the wealth tree. The only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free.